to today's Recovery Unplugged. Uh, today is the last Recovery Unplugged that I'm going to do with you. Uh, Juan is going to do one more next week, but we're going to take a break for the summer. Uh, as our summer season gets busier and as our conference start, we hope that you tune into them uh, so that you can keep, uh, keep in touch and keep growing in your faith. But one of the things that I thought about as I end my time with you for this year is I would love to give you some book recommendations for summer reading. Uh, books that um, will help you continue your growth and, and maybe some that will whet your appetite to go deeper. Uh, so I'm gonna just going to introduce these to you one, one by one, and uh, some I have the books for, some I do not. But the first one is The Healing Power of Forgiveness by Ray Pritchard, who is also a speaker here uh, week five, so we want to touch base on that one. Uh, this is one powerful yet profoundly easy to understand book. Forgiveness is a real struggle, and so many of us do it wrong that we end up living with roots of bitterness, anger, and hurt inside. We do an external forgiveness, but not an internal peace. With God and Christ as our example, this book will help you let go of so much hurt and pain inside and free yourself without requiring your offender to do anything. Forgiveness, remember, uh, Ray begins by saying forgiveness starts with us receiving forgiveness. Uh, becoming free internally of our own sins and our own offenses, which then will open the door for us to offer forgiveness to others. So Ray Pritchard's book, The Healing Power of Forgiveness. Another book is called Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa Turkhurst. Brand new book out. Um, right inside it says, have you ever felt stuck in a cycle of unresolved pain, playing offenses over and over in your mind? Uh, and you know you can't go on like this, but you don't know what to do. Well, Lisa Turkhurst has wrestled through this journey. Uh, she's had, um, she's made it very public that there were a lot of public issues in her marriage. Uh, but in surprising ways, she discovered how to let go of those resentments and overcome the resistance uh, to forgive people who weren't willing to always make things right. And with deep empathy, she's understanding. Uh, with therapeutic insight, she actually got a team together to help her do this. And rich Bible teaching, um, out of hours and hours of, of study, not just experience, Lisa is prepared to help you um, forgive what you can't forget. Another book that I actually read on my vacation this year, uh, it's called Waiting for Heaven by Larry Crabb. Brand new book out. Uh, Larry Crabb is somebody that I have followed uh, since the early days in my Christian uh, uh, counseling training and he's been foundational in so much of the Christian counseling integration movement and getting the Bible and uh, into the counseling uh, offices. Uh, Waiting for Heaven provides everything your soul learn, learn, learns, yearns for, sorry, demanding nothing in this life. Uh, this book will help us uh, to free us to love well, to delight in God and be there for others. Uh, this book talks about our addiction to self. So this is self-addiction, which all the other addictions kind of fall out of, and how it keeps us from experiencing true joy. Larry Crabb says, Until we learn to wait eagerly for heaven, when all our longings will be fully and forever satisfied, we will be inclined to live for one central reason to make this life work as we want it to work out rather than the way God does. Beware, this is a very convicting book, but it is a must read for anyone serious about living the abundant life available only in Christ. Another book, All Together You by Jenna Rimsma, which I'm sure I didn't say it right. Uh, this book takes us to James 4 that asks the question, what is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from the passions that wage war within you? Well, this book takes a deep dive into our souls and looks at our warring parts. It helps us to understand them, befriend them, and unify our soul. Our parts, she said, are not who we are. Our true self is the God image at our core that we can welcome in and allow him to heal all these internal warring parts. Uh, parts of us that we don't like, parts that we don't want anybody to see, that we want to hide behind, or parts that we use to create a facade. Uh, this book will help you understand your emotions and your responses 
for greater freedom uh, within and with God. So all together, you. Another book uh, similar is called Boundaries for Your Soul. This is sort of the first book that I read that kind of really talked about uh, our internal uh, conflict that can be solved by understanding all the different dynamics going inside. It's a slightly more abbreviated book than Altogether You, but it's a simple model that helps you turn your overwhelming thoughts and feelings inside into your greatest allies. Learn from a simple visual how to calm the chaos within so that you can move from doubt and conflict to confidence and peace. This uh, actually has a free workbook that goes with it also online. Uh, on the same idea of our inside and, and the internal work is a book called Soul Keeping by John Ortberg. Uh, John's been around for uh, quite a while and he really, he says in summary of his own work, he says, most of us do not really understand the concept of our soul. Therefore, we do not tend it well. John helps us see what our soul longs for, what it needs, and how to recover our soul. Uh, and he talks about its most important connection is to God, which is where he exists within us. It's a practical and timely in a day where um, we do so much external work to find peace and contentment. He says we are actually starving uh, to find those things that will satisfy our soul. Uh, another book that I'm in the middle of reading, uh, but I've I'm actually anxious to finish it. It's How Did I Get There? Finding Your Way Back to God When Everything is Pulling You Away by Christine Kane. Uh, this book is also new and uh, off the press. Uh, and this is, Christine starts with Hebrews 2.1. It says, for this reason, we must pay attention all the more to what we've heard so that we will not drift away. And she says, we don't drift because we aren't strong or haven't walked with Christ for many years. It just happens. But once it does, if we don't look up, check our markers, we'll be taking places we never wanted to go, emotionally, physically, relationally, or spiritually. Uh, she says there is no aspect of our lives that is not immune from drifting and no single person who is prone not to drift. Christine takes honest rawness, refreshing hope, shows us how to anchor our soul. This book will help you find your way back. It will lead you to a peaceful place a place that will keep you on mission and healthy at the same time. This is a great book about self-care for your faith, for your emotions, and for your foundation, and to make sure that you are well anchored. Um, another book, I Will Not Fear, Walking in Greater Wholeness and Victory by Defeating Anxiety, Stress, and Worry by Mark DeJesus. Uh, Mark has a podcast, uh, does a lot of work with uh, identity issues and, and we like to use him at Barbara's Place because he's got some real practical things. Uh, this book dives into the dynamics of fear, worry, and anxiety and it points us towards finding security in God as our Father. He also talks about being perfected in love. He, it is very practical and he addresses the physical issues that fear and worry produce in our lives. And it's a great book if you struggle in those areas. Uh, another book, and some of you may not, uh, be may not be thrilled with the author, but it's Joyce Myers wrote a book called Healing the Soul of a Woman. It's a book and a workbook. But this may be the perfect summer group study or a personal study because you will be supplied the tools needed to experience freedom from shame and guilt. The author also addresses boundaries and relationships. Her stories will resonate with every woman. It's an easy read and the workbook is a powerful part of the experience. This, is, this really is a practical, easy, dynamic, uh, instructional way to really address um, those of you that carry a lot of shame and guilt in life. Another book written by Bruce Marciano, who played Jesus in many films, uh, it's called Jesus, the man who loved woman. He treasures, esteems, and delights in you. Jesus, the man who loved woman. Uh, Jesus has a heart and compassion for women. He wants to give women undeniable value and significance. A study on Jesus's interaction with the women in scripture and through those interpretations, we are shown his love and compassion for every woman. 
and we encounter the way he lifts them up from their current life to the life he had always planned for them. This is more of a light read, but profound truth about our Lord, his relationship with women, and men, it would be a great read for you to see how God calls you to appreciate love women. So it's a great book, whether you're male or female. Uh, another book that uh, we use this and teach this uh, often at Barber's Place, and especially during our devotional times or uh, some of our um, spiritual uh, development areas. If you want to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat by John Orberg. Uh, John reminds us that there's a faith that allowed Peter to walk on water. This book invites you with that same invitation that Jesus is calling you toward himself. He's waiting to meet you in ways that will change you forever. It's exciting and the challenges you, that when you step out in faith and follow God. Compared to some on this list, again, it's a little more on the light side as you're taken on a journey towards aligning yourself with God's purposes for your life. Uh, it's a, 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 great, a great read. This is actually the workbook, so there's a study guide that comes with it. Uh, now I'm going to take you to a little deeper read, a little harder work, but for some of you, you're out there, give me some meat, give me some meat. Uh, Christian Codependence Recovery Workbook, From Surviving to Significance, a biblically-based view on a term that a lot of us don't like to talk about or think about. But this workbook takes you through a truth-finding journey to reveal how you love, how you do life, and how you do relationships. And it doesn't stop in showing you where the problems in your life stem from. It offers healing uh, from the principles of Christ in a fresh and profound way. Uh, this is another book taught at Barbara's Place by uh, Diera um, Mendez. And another Barbara's Place member says that this book has been the number one book that's helped her learn her true identity in Christ when she was a newer Christian. It's more than a book. It's a resource to continually lean on in life. So if you want to grow closer to the Lord and to embrace healthy and whole relationships, this study, uh, deep and hard, might be just the right resource. Um, so that's a, a great option. Uh, another one we'll take a bit uh, on a different kind of same track, different style, is Soul Strong by Lucinda Seacrest McDowell. Uh, Lucinda has spoken at Two Girl Talks. She's come and uh, shared with the women at Barber's Place. Uh, this book will walk you on a journey to deeper understanding of yourself and lead you to a deeper inner walk with Christ. This is a great spiritual journey book. Uh, this book, workbook, is part of our curriculum. Uh, and she shares personally her walk. And so as she honestly takes you on her journey, you learn from that journey so that you can walk a new, deeper journey with Christ. Uh, really good book. Uh, another one, uh, I'm going to warn you, this is a very popular one. If you are more into novels, uh, this is called Sensible Shoes. It's a story of a spiritual journey by Sharon Brown. This is a moving story of four women who arrive at a retreat center and find themselves um, drowning in their own separate stories of isolation and struggle. And they move into a collective journey of spiritual practice, mutual support, and personal revelation. This book is a huge part of our curriculum. And as the women in the book heal, uh, our women heal and they see themselves in it, you will grow and heal also right along with them. It's as if you become a part of their group. Uh, there is an extra study guide, which is uh, definitely helpful. Uh, there are four books in this series, and I promise you that you are going to, when you get done one, you are going to want to read the next one and the next one and the next one until you're done. And then you're still going to want more because it just draws you in. Uh, and it really is a great guide to show you the work that God can do in lives and how he goes about doing that and how he speaks into lives. Um, the next books are, um, this one is dealing with the lies that steal our confidence. It's called Enough uh, by Sharon James. And often the voices in our head become the enemy's tools to keep us defeated and in cycles. 
This book will help you recognize their source and lead you to stop listening to them and replace them with the truth of what God says about you. Sharon helps expose the lies that keep you bogged down in shame, insecurity, and feelings of inadequacy. In an open and honest fashion, Sharon will lead you to embrace God's truth and grow in your faith. Uh, many of you women remember the book um, Lies Women Believe. This is very similar, but takes you in a kind of more updated, modern, personal uh, story walk. Lots of different stories of women that had to overcome and could begin to embrace the truth about who they were. Another book by Sharon, and I've actually heard her present this book in a conference. It's called Take Hold of the Faith You Long For, Let Go, Move Forward, and Live Boldly. Uh, it is a great sequel to Enough, but it will stand alone. Sharon helps you go from a stagnant or less than joyful faith to the abundant life Jesus offers. A mediocre, mundane faith is not your destiny. Sharon reviews some of the ways and reasons we get stunted in our Christian walk. She will help you break free and embrace all of God's promises and live the victorious Christian life. It is less about knowing the truth to actually knowing how to walk in the truth. So if you take her first book and you learn the truth, then this one actually helps you fully walk in that truth. Uh, another new book, which is on my Kindle, is called Winning the War in Your Mind, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life by Greg Groeschel. He says, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Who you are today is the result of your thoughts in the past. Who you will become in the future will reflect what you think about today. It's time to change your thinking so God can change your life. That is Greg's invitation to join him as he outlines four principles for our thinking. The replacement principle, the rewire principle, the reframe principle, and the rejoice principle. A must read for any Christian that wants to grow and be more and more like Christ and live free as God designed us to live. Um, great resource uh, all the way around. Another book, and it's by Philip Yancey, and this one is probably one of the older books uh, on this list, uh, but I really have found this book uh, to be very, uh, like an eye-opener for me. Um, grace has been distorted and lost in the church at times. Some of us have been hurt by churches that, that walk more in judgment and rules and condemnation. Uh, yet grace is what makes Christianity different and unique. It is the foundational principle on which our faith stands. Yet many of us really don't have a full comprehension of what it really is and the freedom it offers. We sing amazing grace, but we don't really understand grace. This is a great read, a challenging read, but it's a worthwhile read. Learn to embrace grace for yourself so that you can offer grace to a lost and hurting world. Uh, what's so amazing about grace? Philip Yancey. Uh, 